from Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Interconnect 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for exclusive coverage of IBM Interconnect 2016. This is Silicon Angles, The Q. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Steve Robinson, who's the GM of Client Technical Engagement. Before that, in the cloud, doing all the blue mix. Now has the, the army of technical soldiers <laughs> out there doing all the action because there's so much robust, so much demand for horizontally scalable solutions with vertically targeted, prepackaged application development, That's mobile right. first, you name it, big data. Welcome back, good to see you. Thanks, John, thanks, Dave. Good, good <laughs> to be you with see. you again. Um, always like, great to have you on because uh, you got a great perspective. You, you understand the executive viewpoint, the 20 mile stair in the industry, but also you got the in in the nuts and bolts in under the hood. That's right. A lot right. of action happening under the hood. So let's get that right away. Blue Mix is hot right now. It's about the developers. Yeah. What's going on under the hood right now that customers are caring about? Well, I always love the cube. You guys were like one of the first guys talking to us uh, two years ago when we yeah. just launched Blue Mix on stage. We walked off, got in front of the cameras here, and uh, it was great. You know, over the past year, it's been uh, it's been outstanding. We uh, uh, we we're adding about twenty thousand folks to to Blue Mix right now on public. Uh, we came out with dedicated, and then what people had really been wanting was local Bluemix as well. So we finally have uh, a full hybrid chain that goes from behind the firewall to a, a single client dedicated cloud all the way up to the public as well. So we've been building that out with services as well. So we have over 106 services on top of it. You'll see things like Watson, which is unique, our DashDB analytics, which is unique, uh, our Internet of Things coming in as well. So uh, it's been a great year on building it out and getting more clients on top of it. It's like really trying to change the airplane uh, engine in 30,000 feet, or in your case, you guys were taken off and, and uh, from the runway. How has that been? I mean, it's, it, it's been some growing pains. Well, of course. There's been some learnings. What have you, what, what's going on? What have you guys learned? Yeah. And give us the update on, on yeah, status. Yeah, Ch changing the engine while the plane is flying. We, we've used that analogy quite a bit <laughs> in the labs. And, you know, we, we have to show relevance in this market. You know, this market is probably the fastest paced technical market I think I've ever been in. And it's moving at such a rapid pace, we had to ship a lot of technology out last year as well. We have every new middleware group in IBM putting services on top of Bluemix. So uh, let's get it out there. Let's get it out fast. Now, of course, this year we've got we to harden it up a little bit as well. So more architectures, more points of view, better look on how this stuff works together, hardening up our container strategy, pulling it all the way back to the virtual machines. So both continue to expand it out, but let's make it enterprise great at the same time. Yeah, and also some differentiation with Watson has been a big, oh, it's you know, huge. It's been Sandy, huge. Sandy's so you're car, to play around Sandy a little bit, calls it catnip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it really is some right. nice differentiation because right now with the quote um, market the way it is, monetization is on number one's mind. Start from startups to enterprises. If you're in business, you want your top line if you're a starter, you got to get monetization. So there's a little bit of IBM in here for people to take and... Well, the, you know, if you look at Watson, you know, when we first started with it, you know, it was this very large, you know, big chunk of software that you had to buy. And, and uh, we worked with Mike Roden's team to, can we chop it up into a set of services? Let's really make this a set of APIs. And we started noticing, you know, you saw on main stage the other day, Alpha Modus, you know, this was a pure startup who started picking up the social semantics. Let's pick up the, you know, some of the, the, the you know, words to text, uh, et cetera, conversions and all of a sudden they're starting to add it in. They said they would have never had access to this technology before. We have that API set now growing up to 28. We announced a couple cool ones this morning. Uh, we even showed it how it would improve your dating life. Uh, I'll probably need some of that uh, with my wife as well to translate <laughs> between the sexes there. Uh, but the, what people are doing with it now is kind of like blowing people's mind. It's far beyond what the initial inception was. So your team of, uh, you know, your ninjas, whatever they oh, are. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so, so it's a large team. It's, but it's a new uh, initiative, right? I mean, new That's business right. unit, new role for you, right? right? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we uh, we kind of had a couple pockets of this, but uh, we, we clearly found that uh, you know getting clients to the cloud is both a technology challenge as well as a cultural challenge as well. So we brought together some technical experts to kind of help through that entire life chain. Help up front, you know, many clients are trying to figure out what their overall cloud strategy is. Where are they truly today and where do they want to get to be? And how can we help them with a roadmap that kind of helps them through the transition? You know, many accounts are very comfortable with only wanting to be private and only glimpsing forward to, uh, to public cloud, helping us bridge across that as well. Then we have the lab services teams, and these are the, the real uh, ninjas, the Navy SEALs. They go as low as you can go. And uh, what they're helping with- In a with, good way. Yeah, that's good, that's good. <laughs> so what they're helping with is very specific 
specific technical issue, technical deployments. A lot of our dedicated and local environments, these guys are there really helping it wire in uh, as well. And then we have the garages. You know, we're up to uh, to five of those. We're going to we announced four new blockchain garages as well. And this is where firms are coming in to kind of explore, do the innovative type project as well. So uh, I think all the way from the initial inception through rolling it out into production, uh, having that team to be able to support them across the board. And, and so this capability existed in IBM previously, but it existed in a sort of bespoke fashion. That's it right. It wasn't coordinated. And a couple pockets here and there. We always had supports. Uh, we had various pockets of lab services, but we won't really want to have the capability of seeing that client all the way through their journey, bringing it all under me. We, we now can easily pass the baton handoffs as we need to have that consistent skill there with the clients all the way through their journey. And, and is the, what's the life cycle of these services? Is it, is it both pre-sales and, and post or just post? Or? Yeah, many times we'll get involved, uh, like our cloud advisors will get involved uh, pre-sale. You know, they'll, they'll say, you know, a specific workload wants to go to the cloud. What are the steps we need to take to make that happen uh, as well? Uh, with our lab services teams, you know, we kind of have, uh, you know, anywhere from a four to six week engagement to, uh, to do a specific technology. Let's get it in place. Let's get it wired in, et cetera. Uh, and then in the garages, you know, we can just take a very novel idea and get it up to a, a minimal viable product in about a six week period. So again, we're not doing dance lessons for life, but strategically placing key skills in with accounts to help them get over that next hump of their journey. Steve, when you look at the sort of spectrum, you know, from, from public all the way down to, you know, private and, sure. and, and everything in between. Are you, I wonder if you could describe the, the level of capability that you are able to achieve with the best practice on-prem. With regard to cloud ability, its services, all the wonderful attributes of cloud sure. that we've come to know and love, are you able to you know, somewhat replicate that, roughly replicate that, largely replicate, exactly replicate that. Um, where are we today? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I, I think, you know, I think most of the clients that we're dealing with have, uh, you know, been dealing with some virtualized infrastructure, probably more VMs as they, as they've been uh, kind of progressing that story. Uh, one of the unique things we did at IBM is could we bring a true cloud infrastructure back behind the firewall? Could we bring an open stack? Could we bring a cloud foundry based PaaS all the way back through? Because the goal of course is if we could have the same infrastructure private, dedicated and public, as they continued to grow and got more comfortable with the public cloud, they could start taking workloads that they had built in one location and start to migrate it out. We view that, that local cloud uh, more used for edge cases. So taking that system of record and building APIs and allowing you to do extensions to that, allowing you access into data records that you have today, you know, dealing with a lot of extension type cases. You know, the core application still needs to be federally regulated, it needs to be under compliance domain, it's got to be under audit, it, but maybe I want to connect it in with a with a Fitbit or connect it in with a with a Watson or connect it in with a Internet of Things sensor. I got to go public cloud for that as well. So locally, we can bring that same infrastructure in, and then they can do more services as they extend it out in the hybrid scenario. What about code bases? Because this has come up. Oracle claims this is their big claim to fame that code base is the same on premise, hybrid, public. Is that an issue? Is that just their marketing, or does it matter? What's IBM's take on this? Sure. Well, we've done a, a lot of work uh, with the, uh, the, the open standard communities to let's get to a true reference implementation. So on OpenStack, we've been doing a lot of work with them, and this is one of the reasons we picked up the Blue Box acquisition. Could we really provide a standard OpenStack locally and also replicate that dedicated and, of course, have it match a reference architecture in public as well? Uh, we've also done the same thing with Cloud Foundry. We, we worked uh, with Sam Ramsey to be one of the first vendors to have a certified uh, Cloud Foundry instance. This is the same local, dedicated, and public. And I think that's kind of the holy grail. If you can get the same infrastructural base across all three, magic can happen. And, but management's important in all oh, this, right? The, the integration piece becomes the new complexity. Right. I mean, I wouldn't say complex. It sounds easy, but no, it's really hard. So, okay, developing in the cloud's easy, easier than we it always used to be. Right, right, yeah. Well, but now for large enterprises, the integration becomes that new kind of like um, criteria. Right. That separates kind of the, the junior from the senior type players. Yeah. I mean, do you see the same thing? No, and we, what are the we, issues? We do. I think there's usually two issues we start to see. This model looks great. Let's have the same code base across all three environments. Uh, one of the things we noticed that uh, a lot of folks, when you get into private cloud, had tried to roll their own. 
you know, OpenStack is, a, is an open source project, Cloud Foundry is an open source project. Let's pull it down and let's, you know, let's roll it out and manage it ourselves. These are a little bit, you know, they're very dynamic environments and they're also a bit punishing if you don't stay current with them. Uh, both of them update on a very regular basis and we found a lot of firms, once they applied 10 or 12 folks to it, they just could not keep up with the rate and pace of change. So one of the technologies we invented was a, a notion called Relay uh, and this allowed us to actually choose, use the public cloud as our master copy and then we could provide updates to it down to the dedicated environment and down to the local. This takes the headache completely away uh, from the firms on trying to keep that local version current. It's not managed service, but it's kind of a new way that we can provide managed patches down to that environment. So one of the problems we hear in our community is, um, and, and I, I presume IBM has some visibility on this. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about last year, John, we were at the IBM Z announcement in yeah. January, and uh, Rosa Million Company talked a lot about bringing transaction and analytic you know, capabilities together. Um, but one of the problems that, that our community has your practitioners in our community. Of course. The, the data for analytics, a lot of it's in the cloud. Right. And a lot of the transaction data sitting, you know, on a mainframe somewhere. That's right. How do they bring those two together? Do I, do I move the data into the, to the, to the data center? Do I, do I move pieces in? How are you we're, seeing? We're seeing a lot of that. that you know, it's, uh, a lot of it was bring the technology down to where the data is, right. and, and now you know, the, 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 the amount of integration you can do with public data sources, private data sources, et cetera, we're seeing a lot more of the compute want to go out to the cloud as right. well. You know, we've done some things like around the, the Dash DB services, et cetera, where I can start to extract some of that transactional data, but maybe I only need a, a few pieces to really make the data set that is important to me as I move it out. So I can actually you know, extract that record, I can actually mask it into being something brand new, and then I can mix it with public data uh, to have it do brand new things as well. So I think you're going to see a lot of dynamic capability across that with more cloud uh, computing technologies coming back behind the firewall, and then more ability to really at least that data would be intermixed with public data as well. What's the number one thing that you're seeing from customers that you guys are executing on? There's always the low-hanging fruit, sure. the easy wins, from bringing a team, of, a street team, if you will, out technical services out to clients, where they're really putting that together. Not their five-year plan, but their one-year plan. Oh, yeah, of course. There's a lot of that agile going on right now. There's it, now new technologies. You can't isolate one thing, you got to break everything, because it's, right. it's, it's, it's a new model. Yep. What are customers caring about right now? What's the, what's the common thing you're well, hearing? I, I think, you know, over the, in 2015, I think the, the discussion changed. It went from, are we going to go to the cloud, or we're going to the cloud. Now, how are we going to do it? And the nice thing about it, I think a lot of enterprise architecture groups kind of took a step back to say, what do we truly have to do? What is a common platform? What is an integration layer? How do we take some of our old applications and decompose those into a set of APIs? How can we then mix that with public APIs? So probably taking one or two projects to be proof points so they can say, this thing really has the magic associated with it. Yeah. We can really build stuff fast if we do it the right way. It's going to be a catalyst to have the IT organization now take the, the tough steps in what's going to be the commonality, what common services are we going to use, and how do we start breaking up yeah, our One apps. of the things you know, we have our own data science and our kind oh, of yeah, back-end operation. Yeah. And one of the things that we always looked at with Bluemix, because we, you know, we started out on Amazon, but now with Bluemix, you got a couple things kind of coming together in real time. You said it's getting hardened, but those hardened areas are important. Yep. Identity, for instance. Uh, where's the data? Is it unstructured and, and structured? I want to put a little Mongo here or something over there. But with Bluemix and Compose IO, really has a nice fit. I want you to explain to the folks, we talked before we came on, about this new dynamic of Compose IO sure. and some of the things that are gluing around Bluemix. Could you share this? Sure, Compose well, you know, da trend? data's king, right? And, and I think as people look to the cloud, Data services are probably, you know, it's the most critical, the most visible, and the, the one we have to harden up the, the most as well. Uh, even though IBM's been well known for, for DB2, and we've been you in guys that. You acquired the, um, Compose, right? Yeah, we did Cognos first, and then we followed it up with Compose IO what, you, as was well. That recent, uh, when was that? Uh, we did about, uh, we did Compose IO about eight months ago. Eight months ago, Eight okay. months ago. And what we liked about it was uh, all of your favorite flavors, uh, you know, so your, your Progress, your Mongo, your, your, yep. your Redis, uh, but, but really having it behave like, a, like what you would want an enterprise database to do. You can yep. back it up, you can have multiple versions of it, it, it can replicate itself. It's, 
these are perfect for cloud native stuff. Perfect cloud. So it has all the cloud properties to it and all the enterprise grade capabilities with it at the same yeah, time. Yeah. So we've got that now in public and then you're going to start seeing uh, dedicated and, and, and local And then if you want to go bare metal, well. just go to soft layer. So it's, it's not required, right? It's right. one of these things where this will work in the cloud yeah. and then you get the bare metal option if you want to push stuff to bare metal, no problem. Well, I, I think, you know, almost hybrid is going to get a, a new definition around it. So it's all going to be around control and automation. You know, the more automation you need, you can go all the way up to a cloud foundry where it's managing all the, the health checking and keeping your app alive, et cetera. If you want to go all the way down to bare metal so you can tune it, audit it, et cetera, you can do that as well. I think IBM's got one of the, the broadest spectrums there. I'm impressed with the Compose AO. I've got to say, look yeah, there. Get, get some... You can tell I'm excited by it, <laughs> what I get excited by. Oh, you get uh, excited about everything. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> I, just love, I, mean, I mean, we just love the whole DevOps has been just a game changer. Infrastructure Perfect. as Code has you know, been around for a while, but it's actually going totally mainstream. That's right. Yeah, the benefits are just off the charts with yeah. mobile. We had the mobile first guys on earlier. Oh, yeah. And the Swift, we had you know, 10 May, 12 year old kid. I mean, it's just really amazing now that the apps themselves aren't the discussion, it's the under the hood. That's right. So you can have an app look and feel like it's targeted for a vertical, say retail or whatever. Of course. But the action's under the hood. Yeah, yeah. More than ever. No, it's uh, you know it's funny. This year, you know, I did the keynote to the DevOps session yesterday, and you know the amount of uh, proof points we had around it. You know, last year we were scrambling a little bit, and this year it's just we almost had to thin out as to how many guys were having great success with this stuff as but, well. It's coming into its own. It totally is, and, and you guys are. I give you guys props for running as fast as you can, and you, you're working hard. And it's not just talk. Yeah, it's 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 legit. Um, so I'm going to ask you the question: What's the big learnings from last year, this year? What's happened? What do you look back and say, wow, we really learned a lot, or something that might have been magnified yeah. for you in yeah. this journey this past I year? Think, you know, a lot of it goes back to you know, the, this changing culture at IBM. You know, you know, the amount of code we put out in two years was just, just unbelievable. But I think also the IBM becoming a true cloud company. Some of that we did with our own shop, some of it we did through injecting it with acquisitions, you know, like the Compose IO, the Cloud and Team, uh, the Blue Box guys, et cetera. I think we got the chops now to play, play pro ball. You know, we, uh, we worked very hard to, uh, how many folks can we attract to Blue Mix? We're getting up to 20,000 a week right now. Uh, we're starting to get some great recognition and the successes are rolling in as well. So, a lot of hard work. I think we got a lot of busted knuckles. A lot of guys are tired, but uh, we're, we're definitely, definitely <laughs> straight in the game now. You're ready for the pro, speaking of pro <laughs> game, Cube Madness starts on, on uh, March 15th. <laughs> Going to plug for Cube Madness. There we go. Uh, you know, Cube Madness, all the brackets of the Cube alumni and you vote on. It turns into a hackathon because everyone stuffs the ballots. Um, let's talk about pro ball for next year. Uh, as you guys continue. Sure. The theme here obviously is developer. Um, I mean, the show could be dedicated 100% to Blue Mix. You got it. I mean, you saw LeBlanc up there kind of going fast at the end. He had to get his. Blue Mix, Blue Mix, Blue Mix. He had to get right, right, the right. clays on the clock. I yeah, mean, that's he right. needed more time. Right. Yeah. You like the Star Wars trailer we had going, going <laughs> yeah. up there. As he needed well. more time. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, good, it's good props to you guys. For this year, what's going on the roadmap this year? What are some of the critical goals yeah. that you guys see on your group and then just in general for the. I think, I think a lot of the activities we're going to be doing, again, is hardening the stack. I've got a brand new team now called uh, Solution Architecture, where we're looking at it from top to bottom, taking customers scenarios and really testing it out. How do you do backup? How do you do disaster recovery? How do you do multi-geography? How do you do little things like PCI compliance? The real enterprise problems are now coming to the cloud. And they're global. And they're global and yeah. with security and compliance, they're, they're changing in a very dynamic fashion. We have to show how you can do those in the cloud. You'd be amazed on how many conversations we have with CISOs every single week. Is the cloud secure? How do we do enterprise grade workloads? IBM is bringing that story to yeah. the cloud as well. That's the story we put how in place this year. How do you update all that content? content in Curation is unbelievable, right? Yeah. That's, that's the hardest part, and it's not that we have it fixed uh, either. But uh, you, we're, we're doing more of aggregating it together so that we can can really pull it all together. I call it the diamond mine versus the jewelry store. You know, we always have. Who uses that too? Yeah, <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jewelry. Yeah, you, know, you got you got the, the great answers out there somewhere, but if you don't start to pull it together into a single place, so one of the things we did this year was launch the uh, the Blue Mix Garage methodology, where we took all of our best practices, we took text test cases even sample code and brought it into a single methodology site where people could start to go out, pull it down, use it, et cetera. Previously, we had it scattered all over the place. And we're going to be doing more things like that, bringing the assets to the programmers, uh, things that we've tried, things that we've tested, being more open about it, but putting it in a single location. Well, we certainly would like to help promote that, any kind of, those kind of customer sure. yeah. reference architectures. Fantastic. Happy to pump on SiliconANGLE, Boogie Bond. Um, outlook for the vibe this, I'm sorry, vibe for the show this, this year. What's yeah. the vibe? this year. 
You know, I think I've been very impressed with it. You know, I think, you know, IBM's stepping up its game. Uh, if you go down to the Blue Mix garage, you see our motor motorcycle on stage, you know, kind of getting a little more hip and happening as well. But I think the clients here, and, you know, this is always about the customer stories and some of the things that we're hearing from the, the, the three guy startups that are doing GPS uh, logistical management uh, to, to, to the big accounts and the big banks that you really see have embraced the cloud and doing great stories on it as well. I think people come to this show so they see what their peers are doing and they definitely walk away with a sense that the cloud is real, it's happening, and 2016 is really going to be driving it home that it has to be part of everybody's strategy. Ride motorcycles? Uh, I had we'll to put you on the up. Harley, man. We'll can put you, you on the. We'll can put you take you it for a spin? Guaranteed. Come on down. I can, I can ride motorcycle. My wife. I had to give up <laughs> my wife motorcycle. You when I got yeah. married, that was my terms of condition. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. I'll ask Watson that. Yeah. See what Watson <laughs> thinks about that. Uh, <laughs> Steve, thanks for taking the time, and great to see you again. Congratulations uh, with the technical engagement team that you have that's and again. all the work that you did at Blue Mix. Uh, noted certainly by the Cube. Congratulations and continued success uh, with the Blue Mix. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you guys as well. Always a pleasure. Okay. Cube Madness, March 15th, Cube Gems, go to Twitter, and speaking of jewelry, we have Cube Gems, <laughs> hashtag Cube Gems. That's the highlights of the videos up there in real time. And of course, go to SiliconANGLE.TV for all, all the action. Videos are up there right now. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break here in Las Vegas. Great.